Hello everyone, welcome back to the 500 MCQ series of Drug Inspector exam. So in today's video, we will discuss question number from 31 to 35. So without any further delay, let's move on to the first question of the day. The question is heptahydrate of zinc sulfate. Heptahydrate of zinc sulfate is called as A choice blue vitriol, B choice green vitriol, C choice white vitriol, D choice red vitriol or E choice oil of vitriol. So basically, uh, if you look at the choice, all these toys contain the word vitriol. So what is vitriol? So vitriols are chemical compounds. They are basically chemical compounds comprising sulfates. They are sulfates. Sulfates means SO42 minus. They are sulfates. They are sulfates of certain metals, metal ions. Okay. So such compounds are called as vitriol. So let us look at the first choice. Blue vitriol is nothing but the sulphate of copper that is CuSO4, copper sulphate 5H2, copper sulphate 5H2 uh, that means copper 2 sulphate along with the 5 water molecules. So it is a pentahydrate of copper sulphate, pentahydrate of copper sulphate. So CuSO4 5H2 is called as blue vitriol. Blue vitriol is also called as blue vitriol is also called as Roman vitriol. The other name of blue vitriol is Roman vitriol. Now let's look into the second choice, green vitriol. Green vitriol is uh, the sulfate, sulfate of iron, FeSO4, iron 2 sulfate. So FeSO4 but the water molecule is 7 so FeSO4 7H2 is uh, what green vitriol so since it is contains 7 water molecules 7 water molecules it is called as the heptahydrate so green vitriol is the heptahydrate of ferrous sulfate ferrous sulfate in ferrous that means Fe2 plus ferrous sulfate uh, FeSO4 7H2 is the green vitriol. Now let us move on to the third choice that is white vitriol. White vitriol is zinc sulfate ZnSO4 7H2. Okay. That means it is the heptahydrate. Seven water molecules are there. So it is a heptahydrate of zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate. So ZnSO4 7H2 is white vitriol. Now let us move on to the uh, D choice red vitriol. Red vitriol is a sulphate of cobalt. So it is cobalt sulphate COSO4 7H2. Again there are 7 water molecules. So it is the heptahydrate, heptahydrate of cobalt sulphate. Now coming to the last choice, oil of vitriol is simply sulfuric acid. H2SO4 is called as oil of vitriol. Okay. So the question here was heptahydrate of zinc sulphate. So the correct answer would be definitely white vitriol, zinc sulphate 7H2 is white vitriol. The choice is C. Let's move on to the second question of the day. Which of the following is not a gram negative bacillae? A choice E. coli. B choice Vibrio cholerae, C choice H pylori, H means Helicobacter pylori, D choice Ersenia pestis, D choice Bacillus anthracis. You need to remember uh, all this choice is given E. coli, Vibrio cholerae, H pylori, all these are gram negative bacillae. Apart from E. coli, Vibrio coli, H. pylori, and other examples for gram negative bacilli included Salmonella typhi, Salmonella typhi, then Shigella. So, Shigella is also uh, is a gram negative bacilli, whereas uh, Bacillus anthracis is a gram positive bacilli. Gram positive bacilli. So which of the following is not a gram negative bacilli? The correct answer is bacillus anthracis. It is a gram positive bacilli. So it is E choice. Let us move on to the third question of the day. Which of the following drug causes adverse effects SLE like syndrome? 
A choice dapsone, B choice hydrolysine, C choice isoniacin, D choice procainamide and E choice all of the above. So the first thing you need to remember, so after exposure to certain drugs, the patient develop uh, symptoms like symptoms uh, similar to systemic lupus erythematosus, which is abbreviated as SLE, SLE is systemic lupus erythematosus. So after exposure to certain drugs, the patient develop symptoms similar to SLE. This is called as such diseases are called as SLE-like syndrome. Because the symptoms are similar to SLE, so it is called as SLE-like syndrome or drug-induced lupus erythematosus. Drug-induced lupus erythematosus. So the question here is uh, which of the following drug uh, causes adverse effects SLE-like syndrome. So remember this mnemonic drugs causing drugs causing SLE-like syndrome which are the drugs causing SLE-like syndrome or simply drug induced lupus erythematosus. So you can remember this mnemonic. Ship, ship of Tamil Nadu TN, Tamil Nadu TN, ship of Tamil Nadu Mini Kuhn. So the you can remember this mnemonic ship of Tamil Nadu Mini Kuhn. So these are the drugs which cause SLE like syndrome. So what is S? So S stands for sulfonamides. Sulfonamides like sulfasalicin, they cause SLE-like syndrome, sulfasalicin. S also stands for sulfones. The examples of sulfone is dapsone. So dapsone also cause SLE-like syndrome. H is an antihypertensive drug, hydralazine. Hydralazine. I stands for the anti-tubercular drug isoniacid, isoniacid abbreviated as INH, also cause SLE-like syndrome. P stands for procainamide, procainamide. Now TN, Tamil Nadu, TN, TN stands for TNF alpha inhibitor, TNF alpha inhibitor drugs. TNA alpha inhibitors. The examples include infleximab, it's a monoclonal antibody, infleximab, etanercept, etanercept. Mini stands for MINI stands for the tetracycline minocycline drug, antibiotic minocycline. Q stands for, Q, Q stands for cunidine. So these are the drugs uh, which cause SLE-like syndrome. You can remember this mnemonic, SHIP of Tamil Nadu mini Q causes SLE-like syndrome or drug-induced, drug-induced lupus erythematosus. Now coming back to our question. Which of the following drug causes SLE like syndrome? Dapsone causes SLE like syndrome. Then hydrolysine causes SLE. Isonia acid causes SLE like syndrome. Okay, so the correct answer is E choice, all of the above. Let's move on to the next question of the day. The question is uh, which of the following is a peptide autocoid? Peptide autocoid. Okay, so we know that autocoids. Autocoids are also called as local hormones. Autocoids are also called as local hormones. They are synthesized, they are um, uh, produced by specific cells in our body. Now this autocoids could be divided into, autocoids could be divided in mainly into three categories. One is the amine autocoid amine autocoids the second one is lipid autocoids the third one is 
peptide autocoids peptide autocoids so autocoids can be divided into three category amine lipid and peptide now coming to the examples for uh, amine autocoids yes it is histamine histamine is an amine autocoid another example is 5 hydroxy tryptamine 5 ST also called as serotonin so 5 hydroxy tryptamine or serotonin is also an amine autocoid now coming to the examples for uh, lipid autocoids prostaglandins is a lipid autocoid prostaglandins leukotrienes then platelet activating factor paf abbreviated as paf black platelet activating factor is also an example for lipid autocoid now coming to the examples for peptide autocoids bradykinin bradykinin then uh, angiotensins calidin so these are examples for peptide autocoids so the question here was uh, which of the following is a peptide autocoid yes we have all told uh, bradykinin angiotensin and calidin so the correct answer would be peptide autocoid the example is uh, b choice angiotensin okay now let's move on to the last question of the day specific dna sequences are identified using a choice southern bloating b choice northern bloating c choice western bloating and d choice all of the above so first thing we you need to know what is bloating okay so bloating basically they are molecular biology technique so they are molecular biology technique which is used to identify various biomolecules. So the molecular biology technique you, which can be utilized uh, to identify various biomolecules are called as bloating. Now to remember um, this thing basically the bloating can be divided into uh, four things. You can remember this mnemonic snowdrop, snowdrop. You can remember this mnemonic snowdrop where s indicates southern bloating which is a molecular biology technique used to identify dna d stands for dna whereas northern bloating is used to identify rna r stands for rna and western bloating western bloating is used to identify p p stands for protein so remember this mnemonic snowdrop southern bloating northern bloating and western bloating southern bloating is used to identify dna northern bloating used to identify rna whereas western bloating used to identify proteins and one more thing eastern bloating basically it's an extension of eastern bloat is an extension of western bloat only it is an extension of western bloat is an extension of western blood basically used to identify analyze the post translational post translational modifications of proteins post translational modifications of proteins eastern blood basically it's an extension of western blood so you can remember snowdrop southern bloating dna northern bloating rna and western bloating protein so the, here the question was specific dna sequences are identified is southern bloating so the correct answer for this question will be a choice southern bloating so hope you understood this discussion session keep on watching our videos thank you